Welcome to our podcast. Uh, we are so grateful to have you, you here. Um, this is our first, very first podcast and you are our very first guest. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. Thank you. Uh, so today we are with Sister Smangele. Uh, so may you please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Smangele Nyembe, as she said. I'm 26 years old. I'm a mother of three. Wow. Three beautiful girls. Wow. One passed on. And I have two beautiful girls and a hustler of note husband, a really loving husband. I have such a beautiful family. That's uh, all that I can say for now. So um, when we spoke, now we spoke about like you're growing up um, when, you, when you told me that your mom left you when you were three months old. So you can can you just take us through the journey? Uh, as much as I was young that time, I, I get it when you grow up, the parents do tell you. So I grew up with my paternal grandparents. Uh, they nurtured me up until I got where I am now. When I turned 18, I started asking questions about my mom and whereabouts. My dad was still alive by then. Then he told me that, no, my your mom and I had a fight and we ended up breaking up. So I don't know if that caused her to leave me or what, but yeah, uh, she abandoned me when I was three months old. When I turned 18, my dad took it upon himself to take me to her. You know... If you have been longing to see someone and have such deep conversations, I was longing for that. But when I got there, she didn't look any interested, none whatsoever, even now. Wow. I've tried my best to build a relationship, but she is not there. I think when she sees me, she sees someone who is successful. When she sees me, she's always asking for money. So if you can imagine. And what surprises me is that I'm her first born child. She has five other kids after me, if I'm mistaken. Uh, the second born after me, she also abandoned him. And the rest of the, her kids, she nurtured them up until they grew up. So mm. Yeah, I'm so sorry for that. Um, so how was it like growing up with your grandmom, with your aunties? Did you ever feel that you were you didn't have a mom, like you know? No, not really. Uh, my grandmother is my mother. Exactly. She yes. took me in from that tender age mm. up until now. She loves me so much, and I love her so much. She's my mom. My grandfather is also my your father, dad. So, yes. You know, I never felt that space that opening but as i grew up in high school other kids were talking say, my mom bought me these my mom bought me that my mom did this and that and i'd be like no my grandmother bought me these every time it would be my granny my granny this my granny that and at some point in life i couldn't talk about this at all i would cry, cry. Yes. but when i met my husband who was then my boyfriend uh, he helped me heal. He showed me that it is possible to go on, to continue with life without crying because it's nothing that I can do. It's not like I can change the times or do anything about that. So I got over that. Even now, we do talk here and there, but it's such... It's, it seems like she's a stranger to me. She's just she a normal is person. A yes. So I'm taking everything as it is. It's life. We continue. So so what what is it that would make you angry? Like what would make you cry? Uh, regarding this situation. Yes, yes, about your mom's story. Uh, honestly, right now, nothing at all. Nothing. I've but healed. before, yeah, maybe before. Before, yes. I would think about her and her other kids. I would ask questions like, why me? Why did she nurture the other kids and not me? Why Why did she not love me? Did she actually think about doing an abortion at some point? Or what? I always question myself 
why why me but now that i've grown up i'm a mother I, i'm always saying why not me if it wasn't me then who was it supposed to be because I, I i as a mom also i i tend to be anxious when i'm, I'm not with my children let's say i go like before for a week without my children yeah. i worry about them when it's winter you need you know that they need winter clothes when you're not there you, you worry are they are they okay, are they okay? you rather do Exec things for them for them than, than, than for you so mm -hmm. now i'm thinking what 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 is it that what happened to you for you to just leave a three months old baby and go just like that and it's not the first thing this is the first time she did it again with your other, brother. other brother so then you wonder what exactly was the problem there <sighs> We have no idea. Only yes, she knows. Have, yes, yes, we have no idea and we cannot judge. But it's as it's a so mother, you cannot now. You can, you can, you can never, never. I can never, really. I can never leave my daughters uh, all alone. Hey. So sad. But you, you go, you sleep, you wake up, you, you eat, you do everything, continue like with it's life. Normal, leaving a three months old baby. And I can imagine like the pain that you went through when you discovered that she left you. Because I, I believe that as human beings, we, we were created to be loved. So there's that void, that, that longing that you have that if my mother was, was here. here. Mm. Yeah. And I, I was also thinking when I was on my way, I was also thinking about the time you got married, the pregnancy. You also wanted your mom to be there. Uh, especially with my first pregnancy. Yes. I was pregnant at the age of 20. Uh, you know, pregnancy and its sicknesses. When I first got pregnant, I discovered that I had pregnancy-induced high blood, which caused preeclampsia. I had to be admitted in hospital by seven and a half months. When I got there, they told me that it's an emergency. I had to undergo an emergency C-section. Like... I don't really remember much about it, but I know it was not a pleasant experience because when I got there, obviously, you know, they don't allow visitors and all that. So I was all alone. Uh, when I got there, I had to sign forms on my own and all that. Imagine that fear that, okay, I'm now going to have a baby, a premature baby at that. And... I have no idea what's going to happen. We had not started buying anything for the kids. For the, kid. for the baby, yes. Yes. Uh, everything happened so fast. It was actually my appointment at the clinic. When I got there, then they checked and saw that, no, something is wrong. Uh, apparently, I had preeclampsia, of which I had to go to the hospital. And that's how I had my daughter. She came one month two weeks earlier but she didn't live past 11 days mm. oh. she had liver infection so yeah sure. then she passed away then she passed away imagine going back home empty-handed went in the hospital with a big belly then going home and empty-handed it's so sad sure. i at some point in life i got depressed I asked myself, why is all this happening to me? First, it was my mom leaving me, and now God decides to take my baby. Okay, I was still young at, at that time, but I had accepted that I am going to be a mother. Then all that happened. And wait, whenever you you discover that you're pregnant, it's like it's a whole new life that is coming. <laughs> yes. You'll be so much excited looking forward to the baby yes. and also the like the first three months, the first trimester you have like your heart pain. <laughs> and all that. <laughs> yes. Actually, I do have heart pain throughout my pregnancy. Pregnancy, yes. yes. You, you change. Like me, my nose started growing. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I've, I've been pregnant three times. My nose grows and grows and it never goes back. <laughs> Every time it grows, my feet, my, my leg, they grow. Tell me long, about that. You know, they grow. I was <laughs> size six now, I'm size seven. So I'm just thinking all those body changes that you go through, then you know that at, at the end, the, the baby is coming. Yes. Then after that, the baby doesn't come. Doesn't come. So the baby died at the hospital. Yes. She was in an incubator. Uh, still today, I still ask myself what actually happened. That doctors and nurses would say she had liver infection and i would go and check on her we had time schedules it 
because I was admitted to mm-hmm. hospital by then mm-hmm. too. But that day, mm-hmm. I was actually being discharged. I would come and check her. They didn't even tell me anything. So it raises a lot of questions. They didn't call the ward that I was admitted into. Instead, they called my grandparents that they should come to the hospital. Then my grandparents called me and asked me if I'm being discharged. And I said, yes, I am. I was going to call you after the doctor has signed Discharge, the yes. forms. Mm-hmm. Then my grandmother was like, no, we're coming there because one of the doctors called us and said you should come to the hospital. Hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. Then I asked one of the nurses in our ward to go and check on my baby. When I got there, I went straight to the incubator where she was actually sleeping. But upon my arrival, I realized that it wasn't my baby in that incubator. They've already changed? Yes. So I asked, where's my baby? And they were like, no, she's not here. She's in the other room. Uh, I didn't even ask why was she in the other room. I just rushed in there. When I got in there, I got two doctors with my baby lying on the bed with pipes and all that connected to her body. Then I asked what's going on. They told me that she's not fine. And in that condition that she was in, she would live beyond two hours below or even less than 30 seconds. If the doctor leaves, there was a pipe connected to her, so the doctor was busy with it. So the doctor said, if I leave this pipe and not help her breathe, she might live beyond two hours, less, or even 30 seconds. So we were not going to leave her without using her breath. We had to see her still breathing. And then I called my husband to leave work and come. Unfortunately, when he arrived at the hospital, because there was only two doc- doctors on duty that day, they had to attend to other cases. The, when my husband arrived, unfortunately, our daughter was gone by then. Sure. So, hey, <sighs> this life and difficult. It's very difficult, and I think the most painful thing is you said it was a C-section. It's going home. Then we are With taking care of the wound. Exactly. And whereas there's no baby. baby. To show. It's not easy. Yeah. Then you also spoke up about you being in the cage. Like they did, did they cut? Yeah. During before and after giving birth, I was actually in a caged bed because of the level of pre and shear that I was in. The doctors and nurses thought I would harm myself or even have feet and fall and all that. So I would always be in a caged bed. When my husband comes to check on me, you'd see that, you know, the guy is so, so hurt. He doesn't know what to do. The wife is lying on a bed, on a caged bed for that matter. And on the other side, the baby is in an incubator. So it was so difficult because I would hardly keep anything on my stomach. I would always fall up. So it was like difficult was difficult and very bad did you at some point feel like did, did it de- depress you did you feel like uh, anger bitterness and all at that at that time no yes. nothing at all yeah. i felt like i think the experience that i had with my mother made me that strong i felt like it's no use crying over spilled milk Yes, I was pregnant. I had a C-section. I have a scar to show for it. But the baby's no more. I can cry. I can never forget her. But she's no more. I have to accept and move on. And the most painful event was when we were actually planning her burial. Just seeing and looking at that little white casket going down. It was so, so, so sad. But... 
after all that event, I was like, no, she's no more. I have to accept. For me to be able to accept and move on and be able to have other babies, I just have to pray and ask for strength from God. And I did exactly that. Three years later, I fell pregnant again, of which we had planned and prayed for that we got our rainbow baby. Such a beautiful three years old. So when when you when the, the next time the second pregnancy you were not scared who to you gonna have like complications and all I was I was scared but I had faith I started going to the doctor at an early stage to avoid having the same experiences that I had with my first pregnancy and to say the least everything went well uh, my only problem is that I always have pregnancy-induced high blood, so that's a challenge. But by then, I was able to control it. I knew what to eat, what to do, and what not to do. Then the baby came. There then was the no baby came. There was no complications, none whatsoever. However, it was another C-section, which I had to embrace. So going back to the first baby, we like when it's your birthday, do you feel any sadness? Do you feel? No, we, my husband and I, made a tradition that every year on her birthday we go by the graveyard, clean her graveyard, and put some flowers for her. We know that she lives within us, so she's our baby. We will never ever forget her. So we just buy her a bunch of flowers and. Because I was thinking that maybe sometimes you think maybe she was maybe now she could have been she could have turned five. We she do think about that because recently we were actually talking about that that she would have been five six years old now. She would have been such a beautiful tall girl because you know, she was so cute. And I think another thing that makes us not to think about her every day is that we eventually lost memories and pictures that we had of her, you know, losing phones and all that. So we had to move on. We lived like it never happened. Yeah, we thank God. I think it's only God who can help you to heal. Yeah. Yes. Then uh, going back to the story, like the first time you met your mom, how did you feel like when you saw her face to face the first time? When I saw her, I saw a copy of myself. Wow. She looked so much like me. Wow. I felt so happy that fi finally here's the woman mm. gave birth to me. Uh, I wanted to talk to her about a lot, but like I said, she had no time for me. She actually left me where, where? in her house. She left you to where? <laughs> she, she left me she, she went outside. to her friends or oh. wherever she was. Wow. She left me there and told me to make some lunch. Just oh. I'm getting a picture of um, like like she, she she's <laughs> that. I don't care. So kind she of left person. me there and I prepared lunch. When I was done, I just left her a note that um, I cooked. And I left because you were not here. So this is the first time you guys are the meeting. The first time ever. So you are cooking for yourself. I'm cooking for myself and and, and you have boyfriend. a lot of oh okay you have a lot of questions, Mama. Where were you? Why did you leave me? All those things you never spoke about. I asked her some of the questions through the phone because face to face she wouldn't tell me anything. Even through the phone, she would just say, "I asked her." Why did you do that? Why did you leave me? Did you hate me or anything like that? She would just say, ask your dad. Or she would say, ask your grandmother. Your granny hates me. And I'm like, okay, if my grandparents hate you, but I am your daughter, you were supposed to fight for me. Even, okay, even after a year or two, or even six months, you were supposed to come and apologize, you know, even if you know that you did nothing wrong, but just to come and mend things, knowing that you want to build a relationship with your daughter, it would have meant a lot. So I had to grow up and be the one looking for you, whereas you are my mother. Hey. So Yeah, I can imagine, because I always believe that God gave us the, um, the responsibility to take care of, each, of our children. Mm. So even if my in-laws do not like me, I'm not going to take my children and do abandon them they yes. so i'm thinking you are a girl what if something has happened to you what if somebody rapes you what if w when you start your period who is there to to 
to tell you. Talking about periods, my first experience ever, I was so scared because, you know, grandparents and the strict trainers, mm. I had my first period when I was in class in grade nine. So I was so scared. The teachers at school didn't even tell us about such things. My grandparent also didn't tell me about such things. She would always say, when you sleep with boys, you're going to bleed and have your period. So when I had my first period, I was like, you slept with the boy? <laughs> I didn't sleep with any boy. I was still a vision by then. So I was yeah, so scared. Yes. I, yeah. Upon my arrival at home after school, I rushed to my bedroom and changed. I even hid my panties and tied under the bed because I was so scared that she's going to shout at me that I slept with a boy and all that. But I didn't. I couldn't even ask her to buy me pads and all that. I oh, you? used a toilet paper and a cloth. So even though I didn't know how to wash them, I had to use my pocket money to buy the pads. Then when she saw them the first time, she, she asked me, are you on your periods? And I was like, yes, I am. But I was scared to tell you because you said, if you see me bleeding, it means I had slept with a boy. But we got okay. We spoke and everything was fine. Yeah, because on that one, I, I also grew up with my, like my mom, my grandmom raised me because my mom and my dad, they divorced. So my mom had to come to job back to look for a job. I mean, I was left to a car, you know. So this is what happened. I was with my grandmom. Then I started my period. Nobody told me anything about period. Nobody said anything. Nobody told me that you have to change your pants mm -hmm. and what, what. So I was sitting in class. Like, these are some of the challenges that we go through as girls. I'm sitting in class. I was in grade 7. I think I was 12, grade 7. I'm sitting in class. And I keep on feeling this yeah. sound. like, And this thing is warm that's coming, you know, coming out. But... You have no idea. There's no idea. And we, I was this girl who was very clever. <laughs> the teacher was like, who can drop the board? And <laughs> I stood up. When I stood up, it was like a bench. You know those old yeah, benches? Yeah. So where I was sitting, there was blood. Then I stood up. I went to rub the board. And, you know, there was silence in class. Everyone was looking at you. Yes, everyone was looking. You can imagine the embarrassment. In that time, it was like a kaya kaya, like the deep yeah. rural, you know. You don't even have pocket money. You don't even know what to do. You know, so I left. When I left school, everyone, there was like some sort of stigma. I don't know. That was back in the 2000s, mm -hmm. yeah. So then um, I went home. I didn't know what to do. I get home. I don't even remember if I, I don't remember how I did it. But I remember when I was somewhere in grade 8 there, but I was on my period again. In that time, it was very hot, and I never changed the, 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 yeah. the pad. It was not pad, it was cotton wool yeah. those days. <laughs> <laughs> it was cotton wool. So now, I didn't change this, and it was stinky, like very, very stinky. And everyone in class was like, mm -hmm. so I'm just saying that um, long time ago, back then, we, we never had this, Conversation would not talk about that. We we'll never talk about it, and um, it was like a taboo. And as a girl child, you have to to see for yourself what you are, how what do you I to do? Make a plan. Yes, you have to take your socks or you have to take your clothes. Anything that you come across. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I just feel like our parents, like those our parents back then, they they never played their part. And I, I, I'm not saying I'm a better parent, yeah. but maybe I'm going to be a more involved parent. parent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now, um, your dad, how, how are things with your dad? He passed on in 2018. Oh, I'm so sorry. We were really good friends. He was a hustler. He didn't work. He would go by the golf course in Kugasdorf mm -hmm. with his white people being a career boy. So he was actually a hands-on dad. He was always there. He would give me money and things when he could. But most import importantly is that he was always there for me. Whatever I would ask of him, he would do for me if he could. And what I love more about him is that he gave all his responsibilities to his parents. He did tell me tell them that as you can see that I'm not working and I have a daughter. Can you please help me take care of her? I'm not going to say I will take care of her because 
I'm I'm a man. Yeah. To, yeah. And I am a man. Mm-hmm. So during that process of her, him and my mom fighting and all that, they ended up doing a legal adoption, having to change my surname from my mom's to my dad's. He was always there. He gave approval of everything. So I can simply say he was an awesome dad. He was hands-on. He was such a good man. Did he get married and he have other children also? He has one child who comes after after me, a few years later after me. And no, he didn't get married. Oh, so, so you have a relationship with that other child? Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, cause I it's very difficult. Um, <laughs> like um, a lot of men, they are not like so much involved. They, they don't care for their children. I'm I'm so grateful that you had a dad. I'm so grateful to God that He gave you a dad who really loved you and who took the the responsibility. It can only be God. Yes, it can only be God. Yes. Okay, so um, on on like the part where you got married, your mom never came. We are actually in a customary marriage. Mm-hmm. So when they paid Lobola, Lobola yes. in 2021, my mom was still that absent. Like there was no communication, nothing at all. Zero communication. So everything happened. They paid Lobola and all that. But at some point, my father-in-law did mention that we cannot continue to do everything whereas your mom doesn't know or isn't present. As my mom had said that they don't get along with my grandparents, I had to take it upon myself to talk to my grandparents and look for my maternal grandparents too so that they can know how things are going. But anyway, I did send my mom a message on Facebook that I got married. Just imagine that Facebook. I got married and her response was like how do you get married without your uncles being there and I was like wait do you even have uncles I didn't know do I even have <laughs> uncles which uncles are yes. you referring to and she was like you do have uncles and I was like I didn't know about that I, my husband wanted to pay Lobola for me so there was no way that I was going to stop him because we want to be together. Now I am letting you know so that you know, Hore, when we do umembe so and mashabi, so you have to be there. You don't have to pay anything or give me anything at all, but your presence, your support, and your blessings will be much appreciated. And she was like, okay, I'll be there. Oh. So we're currently planning our wedding celebration, which will be happening in September. I did tell her, but you can still see that she's not interested. So she stays around Houghton? Yes, we stay in the same area. I moved from home in Mansonville to Kareso with my husband. My mom stays in Kareso. So you can imagine you are like in the same environment with your mom, but she's don't a talk. stranger. We don't talk at all. The only time we she sends me a message, she'd be like, Smangele, eh, Didi Malo needs shoes. Didi Malo needs this or Kutano needs this and that. So when she sees me, I think she sees a, a fountain of money, <laughs> of which I don't even have. So I always, always tell her that I don't have or I'll give you if I have. And when I do have, I do give her. So... Hey, we're just strangers. I don't know because we just share blood, but we are strangers at the end of the day. Because my my question is, of course, whenever we do things for other people, we do because we have a relationship with them. So if but this is your mom, so you you are giving her money, but Yena does. It's not like we want to sell or exchange exactly. eh, love for money, but I'm just saying when when she says, "Manyele, hi, I need shoes," or "Hi, I need this." Does she even know that, she, where, where, who is Smangele? Where did Smangele come from? How did you grow up to be where you are? Where I am. Yeah, she, she, she doesn't. She doesn't know anything at all. Because at some point, I would feel like, as a mother, she must be the one giving me money. Yes. I don't even have to ask. At least to say, you know, here's 200 bucks. 
go and buy yourself something nice. But she doesn't. Instead, I'm the one who gives and gives and gives. So when you, when you, how did you get the Facebook na- username? You asked your dad or you checked your birth certificate? She sent me a friend request. I knew her name, so I could tell from the friend request that this it's her. Name. Then after the friend request, did she, did she say anything or? No, I accepted. Then she sent a message like a normal person. Hi, hi, how are you? And she didn't introduce herself. Uh, no. Uh, when I may, am I seeing you? Like, by then I was still eighteen, and I I needed permission from my grandparents, and knowing that they don't get along, there was no way I would tell my grandparents that I'm going to see my mom. I had to lie, and say I'm going out with friends or going somewhere. So that's how I got to see her. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what to say. We cannot judge, but it's just a painful experience. It's too that painful. Mm, it's very painful. It's, and I, 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 don't know, I don't know what to say. What I can say is I'm so sorry for what you went through, and I'm grateful that today you are the strong woman that you are, and I, I saw that you've got a kitchen. Yes, a I business, do. Yeah, a business like woman. A yes. <laughs> Yes. So how's the business going like? It's going so nice, so nice. I've always loved food, content creation and all that. Wow. In 2018, after my dad's passing, I had a dream. He told me that my the power is in my hands. The only way I can make money is through my hands yes. and cooking. Yes. Then in 2018, late 2018, I started a catering, a small and catering business, whereby I was doing platters. And it went on and on until mid-2019. Then I stopped. I don't know what happened, but I stopped. Then it was COVID. And then then I did a few catering events. Then earlier this year, I had that thought again. I revisited that thought, that dream, and said, you know what? Let me do this again and see how it goes. But so far, so good. It's going so well. Wow. Maybe you can also share your, or maybe you're going to give me the, like the Facebook, pe- if you have a Facebook link or whatever, so that you can put on the screen and people can follow you. No problem at all. The business name is Ikishi Lagamanyembe. Also, Ikish Lagamanyembe on Instagram, Ikish Lagamanyembe on TikTok, and wow. also on Facebook. Wow. So do you deliver? Yes, I do deliver. But I would actually suggest that when you order, maybe you in Bed Bochi or you order about a minimum of three plates so that you can be able to cover the delivery fee. However, around Kahi, so I do deliver f- with a minimum of 12 rands to 24 rands. Our plates start from 40 rands a plate. It's one starch and one meat. And we have a two meat combo that goes for 65 rands with salads on the side. Okay, did you know that you can also register on Mr. D? I knew, but I never gave the thought. Yeah, you can. It's to, to be like it, it goes under the the African kitchen class. So, people, and we, we 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 love. We don't love burgers. You do. You we do. love pub. <laughs> <laughs> you love pub. Yes. And food. Yes. We love pub. <laughs> That's so if, the best seller. Yes. It's actually, my serious. You know, the people love mukodu when yes. it's mukodu Monday. You yes. can see the sales go up. They also love Inyama mm-hmm. because I decided that, you know, I'm not going to cook it the traditional way with just salt and water. You're putting tomatoes. I do something nice. Not recipe, tomatoes. Recipe. Eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do it in a more Western yet traditional way. So people do enjoy it. It's actually my star dish in the kitchen. Wow. Thank you, Sis Mayele, for coming. And I'm so grateful that you came. And um, what I want to say is God allows us to go through painful experiences for a reason. 
it's not easy. I know that there sometimes we don't understand God. Why are you putting me through this? But maybe God he has a way of protecting his children. Somebody said, um, it's, it's a story. They said it, there was a like a bush was burning. A bush was burning, so there was a fire. So there's this lion that came and, and took its child. But lions, they don't have hands, so they bite. Yes. <laughs> so it, it it was biting the cub, and you know. You know, it's, it becomes uncomfortable, you know, because lions, they kill. Me. So you can imagine <laughs> the, the strength yeah. in the teeth. So it was running away from, from the fire with that baby in the mouth. But the baby didn't understand. Why is my mom biting me? Then when the, 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 the lion so took the baby to, to a safe place where, where there was no fire, then he put it down there. So I'm just saying that sometimes God takes us through... From, from from a fire, but we don't know what fire is it. And when he's taking us from the fire, it's very painful. It's very, it makes us cry. It makes us sad. But maybe, I don't know, God was protecting you. Maybe he saw it fit for you to be raised by your grandmom for a reason. Yeah, yes. that's true. There's a lady that I'm following on Instagram by the name of Ntaviseng mm Matoli. -hmm. She always says, Mudimu ki wakona ka ufela. I mean, it's all of us. God is for all of us. Yes, yes. No matter the situation you are in, you will always conquer. Mm. He cannot put us in difficult situation. Knowing very well that we cannot conquer or we cannot become victorious. My middle name is Victoria, so I wow. always say I am victorious. There's no way in life that I won't win. It might take time, but at the end of the day, I'm going to get there. Amen, amen, amen. There is indeed a... Uh, Hope the, they say there is light, light at, at the, the end, end of the, of the tunnel. tunnel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Then you told you you said something about content creation. I don't know what, what you. I am doing. still taking baby steps. I'm still getting there. Mm. I am hoping for sponsorships. So we can only take it day by day, step by step. I guess you know these brands. They want to see our work before they can actually approach us. So mm. I'm just. Go in step by step. So you're posting on TikTok, TikTok, and Instagram. Instagram, and Facebook. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, I know TikTok. TikTok does it. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So yeah, a new it, page, but yes. I can say it's getting there. Wow, it's not so bad. Thank you so much. Um, uh, do, do you have anything that you would want to say to somebody who's going through like a difficult page in life and they don't have the strength to carry on? Uh just like to say keep on keeping on it's not easy but soldier on soldier uh we can't be in difficult situations whereby we won't be able to get up you fall and you get up just get up and dust yourself focus just focus have your highest focus levels and trust me you're going to win amen and trust in god also Yes. There's no one better than God. Yes. And God fails to do only one thing in life, mm. and that is failing itself. Amen. He can never fail. Amen. God's, yeah. God I is not a failure. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> God has never lost a battle. Never. Never. It might take time, but eventually mm. you you're get going there. To you will get there. When the time is right. You when your time is right, mm. you, you make it. There. Yes, you yes. make it happen. Okay, thank you for watching this podcast. And if there's a first time um, watching us, please. Uh, you can just hit the subscribe button and support your girl. And if you'd want to be part of the podcast also, you can send me an email on jilung at, at gmail.com. Thank you, Sis Mangele. Thank you so much for having me. And happy belated birthday. Thank you. <laughs>